Have you had a good day? Of course you have. Well, look, thank you very much for hanging on in there. Uh, I know it's been a long day, a long couple of days, and hopefully very insightful for you all. Um, and hello to everybody who's uh, streaming this from, from home. Um, I'm really pleased to be here and, and to see humans again after 18 months of being in my, in my office at home. So thank you very much for having me, and thanks for the wonderful introduction, Inkan. Um, now, before I start, I want to ask a quick question to, to you guys, the audience. How many of you here would class yourselves as marketeers? Yeah, quite a few of you. Good, good. And, and how many of you would say your job's really easy? None of you, I hope. Oh, wow. I need to speak to you afterwards. Um, well, <laughs> well, yeah, we know that it's getting more and more difficult for marketeers to justify you know, what they're adding to the bottom line. Uh, and this is driven by a lot of fragmentation, particularly on you know, the media buying side uh, and also the amount of partners that you're having to work with. Uh, and that's making measurability more and more difficult. And actually, if you split that, we've also got a lot of fragmentation on the customer side. So you know, consumers are now you know, accessing more and more media to consume the content they want. They're also shopping both online and offline um, in a variety of ways from a retail perspective. And then from an advertiser point of view, you've got more and more providers from a tech perspective to work with, as well as advisors too. Um, and we know, if anything we've learned from the last couple of years with COVID, that consumers have become truly agnostic when it comes to accessing content via devices. They just want great content, and they want it when they want it. So whether that's at home, streaming from the, from the television set, whether that's on a laptop, or even on the go um, via tablet or mobile. And this has meant that if from a marketeer perspective, you've really had to adapt your approach and become more and more holistic. So the traditional methods of buying, say, OTT and display marketing and search separately has now converged and it's become more and more holistic. So you know, from an awareness perspective, you've got OTT, high impact video, leading into online video, which then hopefully moves consumers into consideration stage where you can remarket with display, and then moving into search and sponsored ads from a conversion perspective. But importantly, from a retail perspective, you've also got to ensure that you've got the basics right. So you need to work backwards from having the basics right from a retail perspective before you even consider running these campaigns. And measurability is now available across all of those stages, which is fantastic. And I'd like to think that programmatic has driven this significantly in the last few years. And in fact, programmatic advertising lends itself well to both brand and direct response. So offering full funnel campaign management. So that really helps to improve efficiency, it helps you to access more premium inventory, so PMPs, for instance, as well as improving measurability. Now, how can Amazon help you? I'm sure you're all wondering. Um, but yeah, I've, I've worked at Amazon for eight years. I've truly um, never worked at a place that is more customer obsessed, and we genuinely try and improve our customer pro proposition on a daily basis. And we've grown the proposition across multiple services, as you can see here. Um, so giving customers more variety um, who will access us in different ways on a daily basis. And what we're doing is partnering with advertisers to help them to improve their relationships with their customers, either through existing customers, building and developing that trust and engagement, or through acquiring new customers, utilizing our suite of advertising products. And from a Germany perspective, we've got just under 42 million unique visitors on a monthly basis. And globally, that's grown to over 300 million. And we, we're seeing that begin to scale and scale um, as customers' uh, behaviors change. Now, from a programmatic perspective, we have Amazon DSP. And that's what I'm going to concentrate for the next few minutes on covering. We've got unique inventory. Um, we've got unique audiences that you can uh, reach both on and off Amazon properties. We've also got unique formats and devices um, and underpinned by high quality traffic and brand safety measure 
as well as measurability. But it's the first three elements that I'm going to touch on today. Now, I know I showed you the awareness into consideration onto conversion customer journey, but we now know that that's not a linear journey anymore. The customer will search, research, browse, and then buy products when they're ready at the right moment. So we're working really hard to help our advertisers understand when to market to the right audiences at the right time, at whatever stage of the customer journey they're at. In order to do so, they need to utilize Amazon DSP's audiences. And there are three core areas for the Amazon DSP when it comes to audiences. Firstly, there's the Amazon audiences, which are born out of customers' browsing and purchase behavior. Um, so yeah, that helps us to create lifestyle, in-market, and contextual, as well as demographic audiences. We also have remarketing audience segments based on browsing, visits, and purchases. And then also, we have the ability to incorporate your audiences from an advertiser perspective, whether that's through dropping a site pixel through um, Amazon campaigns, whether that's through ingesting um, your own CRM for first party audiences uh, via our hashed audiences tool, or that's whether you're working with a DMP from a transfer perspective. So we can incorporate both your audiences and our audiences in order to optimize both reach and engagement. And then we have a growing area of focus, um, which is essential now to any campaign, in my opinion. And that is an always-on display remarketing strategy. And we have the tools to be able to allow you to remarket and reach customers who have browsed but not bought your products, people who may have already browsed similar products you have in your brand, but not other products. Also, we can allow you to remarket to customers who may have browsed other products from competitors, as well as customers who have searched for specific keywords. And it's super important. Now, I'm mindful I've talked a lot of hypothetically. So what I want to try and do now with this slide is bring it to life a little. So let's think about uh, maybe you have a, a product launching early next year. Um, you start with a pre-awareness, uh, pre-launch phase, and you, you start with a broad um, targeting um, audience. You then refine that as the campaign moves closer and closer to launch. And then when you get to the launch phase, you then start to refine your strategy even more. You can then remarket to those customers who've shown an interest in the ads but not purchased. You can start to exclude those customers who've already made a purchase, so you're your campaign is a lot more efficient. You can then remarket to you know, those customers um, who may have bought similar products, but not your products, so building lookalike um, audiences. Um, and then you can start to add relevant custom audiences associated with your brand. You can then, as, as a life cycle of the product moves further on and you have associated products, you can market to um, similar customers who've bought your product and the brand with associated products. And then as we start to enter the Q4 gifting phase, you can market to customers who have a high propensity to purchase, even if they've already purchased your product. So hopefully that brings to life the ability you have within the Amazon DSP to really get the best out of your campaigns. And when it comes to inventory, there are three key areas from an Amazon perspective. First, um, I guess, is our owned and operated inventory. So that is uh, our own properties, such as Amazon Retail, um, IMDb, Amazon uh, Fire TV, Fire Tablets, Twitch. We then have Amazon Publisher Services, which is a growing part of the business. Um, and that is our head of bidding technology, where we directly integrate with high quality publishers. So it bypasses SSPs to make your spend more efficient. And then, of course, for expanded reach, we also have open exchanges um, that we partner with. And before I wrap up, uh, I want to talk about three core areas of focus that we also have to continue to improve the proposition of the Amazon DSP. 
The first is audiences. That's a hot topic at the moment uh, in terms of the, the identity discussion. Um, so we're spending a lot of time developing our audience tools and our capabilities. We're also investing significantly in partnering with new inventory from a supply perspective, as well as third-party integrations and supply path optimization, which I think is a topic I saw uh, is happening later today. And we also take a lot of feedback from our partners to ensure that we're always improving the accessibility of a DSP from a UI perspective so that we can cater to your needs no matter how you want to run the campaigns. And I think it would be remiss of me um, if I didn't show you, it's a very busy slide this, but I wanted to kind of bring together all of the products we currently have that we're developing into the AdTech suite. So we have these products, they're live, uh, and, and what we're doing at the moment is bringing this together to make it as interconnected as possible and as seamless to use for you, our partners. So from a activation, so sorry, from a planning perspective, into activation and then delivery, and then importantly, underpinned by very high quality measurability, either through the seismic ad suite, through Amazon Attribution, or through Amazon Marketing Cloud. And that is it from me. Um, I wanted to thank you for your time, for listening. Um, and I know Incan mentioned this at the start of the presentation, but it would be remiss of me not to mention the fact that we are hiring at the moment and we have roles in the ad tech sales team, as well as the uh, programmatic solution consultant side from a tech perspective. Um, so if you know of anybody, um, we have offices in Hamburg here, we have Munich, we have Dusseldorf and Berlin. Uh, so please drop me a line, Fraser Locke on LinkedIn, um, and point me in the direction of anyone you know. Thank you very much for listening. Take care and stay safe.